The last few uh, lectures and segments, we've uh, talked about formal ways of calculating uh, voltages and circuits and currents in, in various uh, parts of the circuit. I want to turn to a more practical issue, which is that if that we have a device that we can characterize uh, that you know that does something, um, we can uh, consider it to have an input and an output, and we can consider those to be ports. Uh, often we'll only have input or only output, or really only concerned about one, and uh, they might be the same leads or anything like that, but we'll want to characterize uh, the resistance going in and the resistance going out, the input and output resistance. So uh, the input resistance tells us that if we apply a voltage uh, to our input port, a current will flow, and how much current will flow is is um, governed by the input resistance of the uh, of the device. Now, actually, uh, we're going to be concerned about small changes to a fixed value sometimes. In which case, the input resistance is not how much current flows for the given voltage, but if we add a little bit more current, or if we add a little, you know, how much more current do we get if we change the voltage by a little bit? That's the input resistance. The example here being a diode, which you know if you is it, in the ideal idealized case can either have no resistance or infinite resistance. And so we, we might have either here, but in fact it, it turns over, it actually has a, a curve that looks like this, and we'll be concerned with the the resistance along here. So this is if we're sitting at this point, the resistance is actually given by the slope, or 1 over the slope of that line. Okay, the output resistance tells us how much the current changes when we change the load, the load resistance. Uh, that's exactly what we did in Thevenin's theorem, and uh, the output resistance will be exactly the Thevenin resistance of whatever's in the box. Uh, idealized as you know as a, a power supply and an output resistance. The Thevenin resistance is the output resistance in that case. So for an example, I have our standard voltage divider here. And clearly if I put a voltage here on the input, the current flows through both. I'm I'm considering the output not to be connected. So the input resistance in this case is just the two resistors R1 and R2 in parallel in series so I add them together now uh, if uh, now if I consider the output resistance um, you might think that it should just be R2 but in fact it's not so imagine that we uh, have a voltage supply here and it creates a voltage drop and this is somewhere in between ground and the voltage we put in if we draw a current here uh, we're basically putting that resistor and this resistor in in parallel, and that changes things. But as we draw less, as we draw some current over here, more current flows through R1, therefore increasing its voltage drop, and it comes down. Uh, we can also consider the case of uh, putting a voltage source over here and pushing things through, then using superposition and connecting these with a short circuit. In that case, you can see that I1 can flow this way to ground, or this way to ground, and R1 and R2 actually are in parallel, which is the answer for the output resistance of a uh, voltage divider.